<laughs> Flax is just standing there. He's just standing there, bopping, flicking his hair. <laughs> no! <laughs> Hello from the void. Welcome back to my channel. It's Rose and Rosie, and we're here with another episode of Not So Berry. Now, this one's a bit of a longer video, so I'm going to get straight into it because I wanted to get through the rest of Carmine's university term because there's quite a big decision to be made, and I need your help. So, let's go watch it. Where Carmine is, is at a bar on a Friday night at 1.30, 1.50 in the morning. And the reason for that is because um, having got back to her halls after her dates with Genesis, she was basically uh, too flirty and not tired enough to go to sleep. And Flax, who is by far the sim we have used most of his body, was awake, so I figured I would send them out to a dive bar. I don't think Flax truly understands his role in Carmine's life, which is very literally, they have, like, clearly are really hot for each other but they have nothing to say like he's literally just standing behind her watching her play ping pong and doing nothing but it doesn't matter what they do he basically stands and does nothing or kisses her there is no in between and um that's not relationship material facts although i might make you my boyfriend just to get a boyfriend in the next phase of my lifetime aspirations so i apologize in advance if i go back on my words marigold's turned up at the pub and she looks stinking cute in her little rain booties and her little sou'wester i mean honestly Oh, so cute. I actually had a really hard time getting them to become friends when they were teenagers. I don't know if it was Blaine being in the mix or what, but um, I just like that they are now getting closer and can dance like absolute idiots in front of each other. Apparently Carmine has level 3 dancing, but if that's what level 3 dancing looks like, I don't have much hope for the dancing skill. Later on that night, because Carmine just decided not to go home, I found this adorable little balcony, entirely by accident actually, because Carmine autonomously um, took her homework up here to do it with this random dude, and so I just let her stay there and work on her projects because she has got class in. I love when Sims' autonomous behaviour confirms the headcanon I've built for them, so this feels very on brand for how Carmine is in my head. Right, well I've stayed up really late, had a couple drinks, so I might as well now do my work, I'm feeling great. In her head she's like making the best possible choice whilst not really thinking through the fact that she's already made a choice that means her calculations are off. Brief interlude for random university fireworks before we head off to study group where Carmine is sadly declaiming on the subject of whether or not uni is a waste of time and money. To weigh in on the subject, our meanest professor, Yukon, has shown up. He is uh, looking bored and disappointed, but Carmine is heading straight over. She's definitely sleep deprived, so she's probably like, I just keep trying and I've joined the study group and if it's never enough for you and I'm just having a really bad week and like, why are you always so mean to me? And he seems briefly contrite. She's got the friendly advice emoji. Oh, but no, he's literally yelling at her. Trash bags. Dirty boot. What the hell? Is he calling her garbage? And apparently they've picked up some romance somewhere because they're losing hearts, which thank God, because seriously? And now he's yelling at her about crabs. Like, is he accusing her of having crabs? God, thank God. Crimson saves the day. That was very quickly going off the rails. I think this is the first time Carmen's actually visited Crimson at his house, and she definitely needs a hug from her bro right now because that interaction did not go well. I feel like potentially if they did have romance, it's because Carmine, she gets on best with people romantically. If you look at like her relationships with Flax and Genesis, they're much higher in romance than they are in friendship. She doesn't actually have particularly strong friendships with anyone except for her family. So potentially she thinks the only way that she's going to get through to Yukon is by flirting with him. She's gone in the bathroom to give herself a pep talk, which is not a bad idea. Also, the little tear overlay makes it look like she's got the power from X-Men and she looks like Storm, I always think, except for a bit more rheumatism-y. I figured it's about time that her and Daisy tried to have a civil conversation, not least because, you know, Daisy is literally Crimson's wife at this stage, so it seems kind of important that they can get along at Christmas and stuff. And it went okay. I mean, they didn't exactly build a stonking foundation for future friendship, but I think I did slightly reduce the bar of them absolutely loathing each other before um, Carmine literally got to the point where she was at risk of starving to death or passing out when I sent her home. Without any real planning on my part, Crimson's providing quite a good contrast to Carmine in a way that she might be increasingly aware of. Like, he didn't go to uni, which is the obvious pick, but, you know, he's doing well at his career, he's got a nice relationship, he's got a nice house, and he seems, like, pretty happy and stable, whereas Carmine's kind of doing the same thing she was doing when she was a teenager, but just with bigger consequences. I feel like that would weigh on her quite heavily as she tries to figure out where she fits in the world and what she wants to do, because I don't think college is providing her with any clarity there, more just the list of people she hates and many opportunities to sleep in common areas. I figured, as it's Friday night, she wouldn't stay in. So I sent her with her usual posse to the Spice Festival, even though she looks absolutely rancid. Um, I really should send her to bed, but yeah, she's 
in my head in the phase of she's only actually got one day left of the semester in the weekend when she'll be prepping for finals and stuff so I feel like she's definitely thinking what's next semester gonna look like I've worked harder this semester you know I went to the bloody study group even though that professor's a total twat you know is that gonna pay off for me am I gonna do better or is this literally a waste of time and money and should I just try and find my way elsewhere and I think also being surrounded by people who have a much stronger sense of self than she does and also fit into the university vibe a lot better like, all of her roommates are pretty functional they do actually like sleep and go to classes and stuff she's if anything the bad influence among them which is not my experience of last time I went to uni there was like one guy who was always unconscious on the floor we will wait and see how the studying this weekend goes and how her results come back on Monday night and then we will make a call about what is next for our mess of a heroine in much the same way I have a slight tendency to forget what the rules of the challenge are, I also keep forgetting that I've been meaning to take like a gallery of pictures of the yellow partners, so Oriole's turn to get one. After a not very good night's sleep, a very sad, no, happy, emotionally unstable Carmine is heading to the library for some study time. The library is really weirdly laid out. And also, can you imagine how annoying it would be having these debating pedestals just in the library where you're trying to potentially work quietly and there's just people being like, in my opinion, the metaphysical concept of time is, yeah, no, would not be the one. It's definitely aesthetic, so sensible. Oh, and this is creepy. They're doing like synchronized bathroom presentation and this poor guy is just like, guys, this is the bathroom? Get the hell out. I mean, it's my fault for making the club rules what they are. And I'm gonna send Carmine down the stairs, down the stairs, downstairs, into the bathroom also, I guess, um, to go and try and make nice with Professor Arsehole. I mean, she's had some time to cool off now, and she's got to recognise she's a smart cookie that being in an enormous feud with her professor is probably not going to get her where she wants to be grades-wise, and she does have two more days to just get through before the end of the semester and things can change, so she's gonna go lay on some charm, because that is always what's worked for her in the past. We know from the romance bar that was lost that Professor Yukon is at least receptive to flirting and Carmine has pretty good evidence throughout her life that flirting will get her what she wants. So having had a chat with Crimson, he's probably been like, you know, just do you do you, do you. Like, stop worrying about what everyone else is doing, stop worrying about what everyone else thinks and just do things how you would do them. And for Carmine, she's tried being studious, she's tried being vulnerable, so now she's going to try flirting her way out of a mess, which couldn't possibly backfire, could it? Now at this point I did start thinking it was quite implausible that they would actually behave this way as part of study group, and while obviously I make the rules and I can do whatever I want, I do like to maintain some sort of natural behaviour, so as much as Carmine might get away with some flirting in the library with all the rest of the study group around, ultimately the professor is going to be concerned about his reputation and Carmine has got to know that if she doesn't want to potentially even get in trouble with the school that she needs to not be doing this in the middle of the library on a busy weekend just before finals. So I am going to send them out and about and I settled on one of the cute little cafes in Windenburg because A. vibey as hell and B. I feel like it's the kind of place that um, Carmine would feel like a professor would want to go and you or Yukon would be like oh, let me show you this great little place you know it's where Lacan wrote his theory of whatever so that's why they're here and they're essentially on a cute little date actually um, and they are getting on which is surprising because he's straight up evil and they kind of hate each other but I'm not even micromanaging things too closely I do actually already have the option to give them a first kiss but I don't think they would do that inside even, just on the off chance that like someone knows them. So I'm going to send them outside to get that little picture. Carmine's decided she likes photography, which works well because I'm constantly making her take pictures. Um, and also, you know, it will be useful for her political career when it eventually takes off. And let's see what happens if we just jump our professor. Woohoo! Do not condone this behaviour in real life, don't do this, power imbalance is just not ever going to work out in your favour and just no, 
In a real life scenario, I definitely wouldn't condone anything like this because the power imbalance is just wildly out there and it's just straight up inappropriate. However, I feel like within the context of this story, I feel like the fact that the professor was susceptible to Carmine's techniques, her charm and her flirtation has really kind of demystified him to her because like, he's one of the first people that's ever been like consistently mean to her for no reason and has yelled at her and implied that her academics aren't up to standard. And and so I think she was like a little bit like impressed by him and being like, oh my god, people like him in the world, I need to, you know, I need to find ways to impress them. If I want to change things, if I want to have an impact, then I have to get people like that to like me. And she's like, no, no I don't. I can get them to do what I want in many other ways. Like, I can use my charisma, I can use my charm, I can use my sensuality to get what I want. So what am I doing trying to make fussy old men like me? In celebration of Carmine's realisation that her power's been within her all along, I decided to get her and Genesis to woohoo because I don't think they actually have yet. And one thing that's been quite interesting about playing the serial romantic aspiration, because it's not one I've ever done before, just because I don't tend to like make the relationships the focus of my Sims things, I tend to like just hyper focus on one random bit of the game and it's never been this so far. How much the game is not set up for this to be doable, like despite the fact that I have custom traits that make her polyamorous and it should prevent her from getting jealous, she's constantly getting slut shamed by her own moodlets which I don't love and this is all she's not in a relationship with anyone this is all completely legit like Oriel and Genesis are completely fine with her flirting with both of them with her being with both of them like there's no beef Flax is very much representing the game's real need for people to just date one person and I think the reason I've never realized this before is because I'm honestly too lazy to send my sins off their home lot this much apparently I've maxed my charisma again that seems like it's happened really quickly so I might bump her back down to a nine. Oh, we've got we got a naked person Person. I mean, cute bod dude, but why, why are your pants? He's put them back on so we can go play some chess outside, but yeah. I feel like this whole thing- ooh, Yukon has invited us out tonight, but right now. Apparently it's a club hangout, but we're the only two people here. Has he lured us out to the bluffs to like make a pass at us? That's a real weird thing to do, and Carmine's really, really sad. So see, she's got the heartbreak cheating emoji again, and the sad about her relationships thing, which is ridiculous because she's not cheating, she has no reason to be sad. That was not dancing, babe. Um, how did you possibly level up? Just having a quick look at their profile, yeah, this is not a good relationship. They perceive they perceive each other as attractive, which is obviously good, but she's got the hurt and personal rift emotions towards him, which is not contributing to her mood. I mean, just look at her face, she looks absolutely miserable with her little storm eyes. So I'm going to have her like confront him with some of this, because after having her realisation that there's more than one way to go about things, I think she would just be like, look, it's really weird and not cool how you think people can only be successful one way and that you are like so aggressive about it. I'm just going to do things my way and if you don't like that then you can get in the bin, frankly. Actually he didn't dislike her standing up to him so that that's good, I guess. Um, and now she's feeling flirty, which is, you know, there's literally a woohoo bush in the background. There's almost no way this is going to end well. I just definitely think she's starting to realise what her power is. There are so many ways to live a life and not all of them involve structured education or monogamy. And Carmine is coming into her power in that sense. She's like, you can't, my like, flirtatiousness doesn't define me, nor does my academic achievement. What defines me is like the impact I have on the world. And so I can have sex with you in this bush if I want to. And it doesn't mean anything beyond the fact that it's what I wanted in the moment. Tomorrow, maybe I'll pass and maybe I'll fail whether I pass or fail isn't going to define me as a person and isn't going to affect how successful I am in life because I know how to work to get what I want and I just have to be myself I'm just going to be consistent be myself and things are going to work out because being a stuffy professor is only one way that you can change the world. Anyway, that's the story of how playing the Not So Berry Challenge made me realise that I didn't want the serial romantic aspiration to just sort of be me awkwardly trying to get through as many people as possible, sort of feeling a bit awkward and embarrassed about the perceived sluttiness of it all. I actually want to embrace non-monogamy and sex positivity as part of this generation and part of Carmine's political career. People's decisions in the bedroom do not define them even though it literally defines her life but that is the game flax my good man you are harshing the positive message i'm trying to put out right now could you stop it please
Unfortunately for Carmine, her day of incredible personal growth did take quite a lot of study time, so she's feeling pretty anxious about the exams. But I increasingly kind of just think that maybe formal education is not for her. She doesn't really thrive in this environment, so depending on how her results come back, I may well have her drop out at the end of term. Um, I'd love to know if you think that is something that she would do if she just decides like this is not the environment for her to pursue her goals. And she's definitely squeezed out as much romantic interaction oh, yeah, yeah. from her couple semesters as is possible including now that she's made peace with the professor situation and um, hitting on his very cute younger sister who she has been attracted to since the get-go and just she's so damn cute I like to think that this is not a revenge thing, it's just a practicing what she preached moment, but um, I don't know if Professor Yukon would see it that way, but hopefully he'll just stay inside where he is and not wander out. As we rack up what I think is the tenth kiss that we need to complete this level of our aspiration. Oh, hey Professor. Yes! Okay, we did. We completed the milestone. Yay! I've been waiting to do that for ages. Um, I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud of Carmine. Oh, check her out. Oh, yeah, and now she's getting yelled at by Professor Douchebag. Well, we knew he was an ass, so now, you know, we can cross him off our list and maybe annoy him by keeping seeing his cute little sister. Oh, and we've also leveled up our mischief. She's employing, like, a real interesting, like, kiss-scare kind of combo, but it does seem to be working out for her, so I guess her mother taught her something. Not necessarily anything good, but something. And then they're just going to walk away and be like, Bye boy, as is correct. Oh god, Vlad, go away. Don't do that. No one likes that. I probably haven't got that long till results come out, and then I have to decide if I'm staying or going. So despite having said mean things about Flax, which I feel bad about, because he is an adorable sim, and Romy did such a good job making like the softest of soft boys, um... I do need to have eight boyfriends and girlfriends and he has been like pretty clear about his wish for us to like officially date throughout uh, knowing of him so I've got Carmine to ask him to be her boyfriend. She would still be like I can commit to you but I'm also committed to me being me. Like you really want us to like be in a proper relationship so we can do that but that doesn't mean that I'm you know that we're, it's a monogamous thing. He'd be like yeah yeah go for it but I don't know how long it'll last possibly not through the keg party we're about to throw but um let us wait and see we're gonna invite all of the gang some of the pooling interest people from back when we were teens obviously the study group people all of our uni friends in case this is like our last moment at university oh curtis got old curtis baby i turned aging back on oh look Cochineal is a kid and Cerise is a teen with some real um, interesting hair. So yay, it's exciting that everyone's grown up, but it does mean the clock is ticking for Carmine to start thinking about like, when are we going to have our, our next generation's baby? You've got two more semesters at uni. Or have you? And you still can't do a keg. Jesus. Whatever I do end up deciding to do about university, I did want her to have like a final night keg party to celebrate how far she's come. I feel this semester she's definitely grown a lot and she's buckled down a little bit in her own way. She's still been doing her socialising. Probably having her very flirty with a dragon fruit keg in play is not the most sensible thing, but hey, what have I learned? Oh, final grades, that's earlier than I thought. Okay, so she got a B and historical perspectives. At least we passed it this time. A C plus in colonialism and C minus scientific progress through time. Oof. Given how much extra work I actually put in this semester, I kind of thought her grades would be higher than that, but they're not. So potentially we can blame Professor Yukon for like doing us dirty because we flirted with his sister or whatever. For now, I'm definitely going to have her go home between semesters and like have a think about what she wants to do. I'm not going to like directly sign back up because we definitely need a rethink. So I guess our keg party becomes our packing up party. I'm a bit not like disappointed but like I'm a bit surprised the grades were so low because she did do all of the work and she got like the good outcomes from you know when they leave class and it's like oh she made an effort and like handed everything in and whatnot so um I'm a bit surprised it's not higher but you know possibly Professor Yukon did something did he like mark us down did he I don't know what happened what happened anyway so Carmine definitely needs to go and have a think but she's got to say her byes which she'll do in her own special way in her beloved shower oh this is gonna be a shit show she's taking Oriole in the woo woo shower and Flax is just standing there he's just standing there bopping flicking his hair you must have seen that yeah oh no <laughs> I feel mean like I don't actually want him to suffer because he's like a very sweet boy but he has never like quite got it through his head like that Carmine means what she says which is she's not looking for a one thing she's looking for a lot of things 
and we're gonna have to have a word with him which he's gonna like even less poor poor wee flax i'll try and get in um and set him up with like a nice a sensible girl outside of outside of the storyline so that he can you know live a fulfilling life in the way he chooses for someone that will really appreciate his sad songs about his feelings and his thoughts on western philosophy because that is just not carmine um we're gonna go say goodbye to genesis and apparently we're taking her in the shower too great carmine i mean i really do genuinely feel like this episode is officially sponsored by the sex education like choral version of the peaches song um we'll call it fudge the pain away you know pain away pain away the pain away yeah i mean flax should maybe consider doing the pain away that way um because yeah he, he, he's a sad boy and carmine is just not having it oh we've got some real negative negative emotions going on just now and we don't need that so let us pack up and move home and that is the end of uni for now so quite a lot happened. I have to remind myself that although sometimes it feels like quite rushed because, you know, people like meet someone one day and then they're in a relationship and then they hate each other the next day in Sims, like their lives are only 90 days long. So you've got to get through it. This is like the equivalent of months, if not years of time. So yeah, I feel like Carmine's really like starting to find her own thing, you know, understand what she wants, like how she wants to like go about pursuing her dreams and the things that are important to her in life. Cause obviously her zero romantic aspiration is like important to her character. Um, I'm quite liking how she's exploring that. Um, I'm leaning towards not sending her back to university. Like, I just don't think she really fits in that well. Like, she doesn't like particularly enjoy the academic side of things. And then obviously she's got this complicated situation with the professor now. So I feel like I might um, pull her out, to be honest. Let me know what you think. Um, I'd be interested to see if you think the same or if you think she should go back and like, try and make it work. Um, I'm hoping that I will be able to get another video up within like a week of this one going live because I've pre-recorded it for while I'm away. I'm leaving for about three weeks and I'm not back till 21st of January so I think I'm going to queue this to go up around the 9th and then I'll get something done as quickly as I can when I've back. I've started the next video, like I've recorded, I've started cutting it but I can't take a laptop with me to Costa Rica so um, I'm just going to be seeing what I can do anyway. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you all as ever. Um, the feedback love is like so appreciated and I will see you in the next video after a little while. Okay, happy new year, bye.